What's up, everybody? It is uh, Metric, episode 71, the User Experience Podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Tim. And uh, today we begin where we left off last last time, which was... <laughs> this is like the never-ending conversation. <laughs> At the end of the year, if we do one episode a week, four a month, 48 a year, there's literally going to be 24 hours of a UX <laughs> conversation. Well, uh, what people don't know is that we're all just recording this all at once. <laughs> we're just going, we're just parsing it out. We were at a weekend bender and recorded it all. And <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's, that's not a bad idea. Last week, we were talking about we finally got kind of at the end of the episode into the whole kind of death to bullshit thing oh and, yeah uh, and it was you know we we're talking about brad Frost's presentation on death to bullshit and, and then we were talking about settings and parameters and filters another thing we do things we do to kind of reduce the fire hose to the face of all the information overload and to improve the quality of life right right i remember you know, like for, for years, and I still tangentially remain interested in such, I focused on, you know, like productivity management, productivity hacking. I like the tricks to squeeze more out of the day. Uh, I like the Pomodoro timer, timer, which for those who don't know, is honestly just a method of timing yourself in 25-minute increments, and then you have a forced five-minute break. Uh, and you do that four times and then you have a forced like 15 or 30 minute break. It just forces breaks in there. And the idea is that during a single interval, you're not multitasking. I, I've been reading a lot of like classical stoicism and, and such like that. And I had just a sort of a Zen moment uh, sometime in the end of last year where I decided, you know, I spent so much time reducing or, or trying to improve the signal to noise ratio. What do you mean by signal to noise ratio yeah so like like here's a we're bombarded we're not really bombarded we're afloat and kind of like the sea of information right and if you think about all the things that like come across your notice every day whether it's in your facebook feed or on your phone or a text message or something on the radio or a piece of a conversation that you hear um that's all making up this signal this uh this uh you know the 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 total information that you get so how does it work for you at work like if you know because one of the i think the one of the best arguments for like being able to work from home like so many days a week is because you don't get pulled into the office kind of conversations or meetings or like people just come to your office or cubicle and how does your 30 minute 25 minutes of break you know work and five minutes off work so i want to cut down what actually gets in front of me uh, rather than try to do more in less time, sometimes like and I, and I apologize for this when I when I when I notice it, um, I can be pretty hard to contact, um, and that's because I I turn off all notifications on Slack, uh, on Twitter, my phone, my phone doesn't buzz when I get a text. I don't check the email except for 15 to 20 minutes a day in the morning at 11, um, and things like this. And I'm I'm. D it's just experimental, but I'm deliberately trying to remove myself from situations where there's some there's someone or something demanding my time. I think the idea of like a notification or whatever, we get into this habit, is like, oh, there's a notification on my phone. I need to look at it now. And, you know, over years of training, people expect that like, hey, um, I sent a text. You should respond in like, I don't know, 30 minutes max or whatever. But I've decided that I want to try to design a lifestyle of deliberate practice because it's it's hard to avoid this stuff where i am like i said i just i've just reduced the signal i go to the signal when i want to but i'm not like i've turned it off right i, I don't get the news how i don't it, get notifications how does it work with real people like in the workplace though yeah it can be problematic so um where um so on Slack, right? Like I'm in 30 channels in my workplace Slack. Uh, 25 of them are muted. The I um, I 
Are you in? I guess my question uh, uh, is better. I think this is really uh, actually interesting, and it's something that I think at times people are doing this for sanity reasons and maybe not even cognitively consciously aware of it right to your point like people re- expect a certain response time on emails or instant messages and then how like carving out a time at work to where it's like hey I, I mean i think what a lot of people do what i do is i kind of book up my own calendar for working right. times so right. people don't uh, invite you know put events or invitations for meetings or things over that i mean and I think sometimes it's just a godsend to kind of work at home because I don't have to get pulled into the office conversation. Not that I don't like the people interaction and having conversations and talking to people, but it's like if you work like in a startup environment that has no walls or cubicles and you'll have, you know, it's like right. you're in a room of people, you know. So so for me, it was um, it's kind of like the the neuroticism of the Internet, like the that white noise that buzz of the web i don't know like i haven't been in like the best headspace in uh a couple years prior um and i find that i'm more easily burned out and 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 things like that um and so what i kind of realized was i mean shit man yeah of, of course like i'm burned out because i'm never turned off right like 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 there's there's always something that demands your attention Um, and you have to schedule like game nights or whatever to, to kind of like relax your mind. I don't know. Like it's, it's silly, but like for me, like it became a thing where, um, I started off, I I, like, uh, honestly, like back in the day, one of our library colleagues, a web services librarian, uh, Matthew Reedsma, I just noticed that he had a little thing in his footer that says, Hey, I check my email once a day at 1130. And I was like, Hey, that sounds like that sounds like quite a flex, right? Because like, like who, like is, what what happens if like his boss emails him at one p.m. Is he not going to respond or whatever? And uh, I actually never asked him this, but I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that too. I did it as a way to control the conversation because um, I even like as a designer even years ago, I was. I didn't want to be reactionary. I wanted people to like slow down. Uh, I never thought like an emergency was really like an emergency. If but it's an the, emergency, they'll come to your office and be like, we need yeah, you now. You know? No, precisely. Right. Um, and you can suss out like the real emergencies. Oh, the servers are down <laughs> or, you know, I like not being contacted, you know? And like, uh, so, so this kind of like time blocking just became yeah, like, yeah. I actually do something that's, uh, it's funny because I, I know exactly what you're saying, and I think probably a lot of listeners, are, everything that we're bringing up, um, I think is something that's touched you know their kind of schedule or work schedule in some way. I had probably some of the worst conversations in my life because of Slack access, you know, <laughs> and basically to where someone is in a room somewhere else in the building or like near me on campus or something, and then they're in a meeting and they're sending me messages from their meeting notes, and I'm like responding. And when it gets to this kind of snowballing point where it's like, hey, listen, I've got other stuff I need to work on right now. So, and the person was upset that they were like, well, what do you mean? We're talking sure. right now. And so I kind of went offline with it because it was like, this is this is a conversation we need to have in person. Let's set up a meeting. You know, this is either more complicated complicated than that, or there's feelings or something that's involved that this is requires a face-to-face. What... Um, I started doing years ago and I don't know what kind of works for me is uh, to get away from the lore of social media and information and news uh, at work is I always have earbuds in and I always am listening to audiobooks. Dude, me too. Uh, And honestly, like I get so much work done. There are times where I have to, where if I'm reading something complicated, I have to pause the audiobook because it's like I can't, you know, I'm, I'm, there are specific instructions or a process I need to read or something like that. So I can, yeah. But then apart from that, like if it's mindless designing or mindless coding or like um, synthesizing data from research or something that's really just a mindless activity, I can power through tons of audiobooks doing that, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Are you, uh, are you on Goodreads? No, actually, I do. I've been on Audible for a long time. Well, so. I was gonna, like, I, um, yeah, I just like, uh, I'm in the same boat. Uh, so I, I burn through a ton of podcasts. I have earbuds in constantly, and I'm on Audible too. But I like Goodreads because it has like a little, uh, how many books per year challenge? Do you want to 
listen or do you want to i i, I said listen to because i use audiobooks um and i said a pretty uh a pretty high one i was like i'm gonna burn through 52 books this year anyway i just like i like goodreads as like a just a place to see what other people are reading because yeah I'm super I, geek i actually like um the free book a month and if you end up getting like a, they're a good month, yeah, so if you get, like, Audible gives you, you pay for 14, you get, like, X amount of credits a month, and you can get, like, free books versus um, you can spend one credit, all books that cost the same. You can read, um, like, something that's new, that's out, or something that's classic, but it's not open domain, and it's the same price. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I always get books that have, like, tons of hours to them, so it's going to go way into the next month, and then I can kind of yeah. have uh the books kind of build up before um, they rebooted, not last year, but the year before the Stephen King movie, it like, I was like, I haven't read this in years. I <laughs> want to audiobook again, yeah. get through it. How was the narration? Oh no, it's fantastic. But it's, it's just kind of like, you know, it's like 74 hours. Of like, you know, <laughs> so, and then you can increase or adjust the speed. And then, um, there are, uh, are books to where I've read a series, but I didn't finish the last one or two books and I wanted to finish them. And so I feel like at the end of the day, I'm not constantly going after notifications. I'm getting chunks of work done. And I feel like instead of listening to music or, or um, trying to watch videos or do social media at work, you know, I'm actually, I've, I'm also doing something that's enabling me to work, but then also polishing off a book, you know, which is kind of cool. What are like your expectations at work? If someone pings you like what well, unwritten expectations, it depends. It, so for me, I mean, it depends on the person, you know, so sure. there are certain people that I work with that are just like, you need to respond to because sure. they will be people that are either supervisors or, you know, okay. definitely. The- yes. Maybe exclude um, bosses. I go same thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. So if you put bosses or supervisors to the, you know, off the, the table, you know, there are people that I'm working on current projects with, not down on the factory floor in the trenches, so to speak, but of people who are like, oh, this is a product manager who's like five states away, or this is a, um, you know, this is a subject matter expert who I requested information from, you know, that kind of stuff I respond to in a timely manner. Um, but I check my email maybe twice a day. Yeah. So in the place I work, people say like, oh my God, did you see that email for both of us? Oh, did we get an email? You know, so I, because I just, I'm a twice a day kind of person. You know? uh, like I, like oftentimes, you know, like uh, they're like, so I work with a bunch of journalists who, you know, their hearts are all in the right place and they're awesome um, people. But for them, uh, like in, especially in the world of journalism, everything moves so fast. So you can you can you can kind of like feel like the urgency every time like they ping you or something like that. There was a time like not not long ago where um, I really prided myself on just like being there for people, and I still like that. But like someone like someone today at like uh, six thirty, I was like, hey, um, I need a little help doing this thing, and I happened to catch a Slack message, and I and I caved, um, and I and I helped them out, and I was like, that's great. Um, most of the work day though, I, I really try hard and I can't, I constantly fail, but I'm trying to not respond to those unless there's like serious urgency, um, or something like that. And the other thing is that like we have, or like I've sort of like set up like processes for like how a bug is communicated. You know, you know, people, people will like DM me. I was like, Oh, I found this bug. Here's a screenshot. And I have like a macro that says like, awesome. Thank you for finding this please report it through this form, right? Um, and so by kind of like declaring like in my email, just sort of like passively um, setting my, like muting everything and, and deliberately not responding to most things, to having the little comments like that, um, I think I think two things happen. I think um, I think I come off really standoffish, um, which I regret, but it's also, I hate to say it, sort of like trained people to interact with me, right? They they start to like lose that expectation. Um, and I feel like in terms, I feel like I sacrifice kind of like being like really friendly and chatty with them, which is something like I, I really love to do for having more high quality work-based communication back and forth. Like unless like the server's breaking or we're we're losing money, it's not an emergency. Like everything yeah, can calm it's down. It's nonstop if you let it. There's actually shall remain nameless, but people I work with right now <laughs> who 
will message you. And within like a couple minutes, if they don't get a response, we'll message another person on your team asking where you are. Oh God. And then we'll call your phone. Um, and then we'll then call like another person on your team's phone. It's like, are they not in the office today? And, and it's like, and so this situation happened recently to where, um, we had a person on our team and, uh, this person call did exactly what I just described. And then finally, when they called me, I'm like, um, did you check their calendar? They're in a two hour meeting right now with this no. client. Oh, I, oh, I didn't know. And it's just like, maybe you should check the calendar. Uh, that's why we have a calendar system, you know? And, and if they're away, it shows that they're here, but they're away, they're busy, you know? And that syncs with our calendar system. So like in things like Skype or, um, Microsoft, um, business or depending on, you know, whatever you, your, you know, instant messenger at work is of choice. Um, a lot of that can sync with your calendar and basically say you're away in a meeting yeah. or, or something. And, but people will, it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, being proactive about it, um, about blocking off your time, protecting your time. And I mean, one of the things um, I did a lean training years ago for our whole IT team. Um, and they basically, the first step in this day, we, it was a, day, a couple of days of exercise, right? Of like learning lean and how to institute it. The first thing on the first day was just like, how are all the ways work is sent to you? And it's like, and it was appalling to hear what everyone on our IT yeah. said. It was just like, oh, it comes in an email or sometimes it'll get a phone call or I'll get texted or sometimes it's instant message or sometimes it's put through this ticket system and other time it comes through this other systemic system or like oh, it's an alert that comes from a server or it's like you know and it's just like the list of like all the work that's coming through was insane and through a couple of days it's like how do we get this all down to as few channels as possible yeah. so it you're not looking constantly looking in 40 places for work um, but you're actually actioning work and pe training people to to communicate with you in the way that you should be we're all guilty of it. I'll pester the shit out of people. I'll say like, what's going on? Why haven't you answered me? And then three hours later, it's like, dude, why don't, what's going on? Are, are we doing something? And it's like a day later, I'll be like, Hey, did you not see this yesterday? And it's, and it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, you, I think after like a day or two, you're like, wow, I'm kind of being an ass, you know, but you don't realize that until you're like, Hey, a person's busy and they have they have to communicate with you and work with you the way they want. It's that immediacy, I think, of having instant messenger in yeah. the office place. It's really well, addictive. Yeah. As well as once that instant messenger is tied to a call or chat system, people are like, hey, you just, there's a person that we, another person that we work with who's kind of new, um, but is definitely old school, kind of uh, 50 and up. And once you send an email and you reply an email or person refuses to use instant messenger, right? Oh man. And then basically after one or two emails go back and forth, they're like, Hey, we just need to jump on a call and talk about this. But so it's like every I conversation <laughs> has to be a working <laughs> meeting just to have, and it's just like, we don't need to have a meeting. This is what an instant messenger is for. Yeah. Or, you know, and it's, everything is a meeting, but that's the way that they want to work. And it's exhausting sometimes. The, so, so exhaustion is precisely like what, um, like I get out of this, just even thinking about all of that, which, you know, I, I still see, I hate, this isn't right, the right term, but like, like neuroticism is like, um, infectious, you know, like if, if someone's like, oh man, this has to happen, da, 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 their, their, their anxiety. If, if you, if you accept that enough, if you're part of that conversation enough, like you start to like feel it. Right. Um, I think and that's exactly the right word. Yeah. Neurotic is 100% the right word. There's a reason why in Germany bosses can't eat. It's, a, it's against the law for bosses to actually contact their employees after 6 p.m. You know, in the evening. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and did you know that? Or No, I didn't. That's new. Yeah. And so I can tell you of work situations in the past that are so neurotic that you're trying to work on something. The project's super important. And you're, you catch yourself one time and you're like, I'm sending emails at 1.30 at night. You know, or like I'm, yeah. I'm on my fifth or sixth reply of this chain of emails. <laughs> At this point, we're just kind of arguing. So we need to meet in person, you know, and it's because that neuroticism is infectious. And it's like, was the project really that important? Did you yeah. really need to, you know? Yeah. So, so, so yeah. So I, I want to ask you about like your approach to 
not emails like between people, but emails and news like newsletters. Like I don't know about you, but I've I've accumulated, I'm sure, at, at like my peak, you know, a subscription to like shit, like 50 newsletters, all web UX or whatever related. Is this something that resonates? Are you on this newsletter bandwagon? I'm not on a bandwagon, but I mean, I kind of get the weekly, um, Baymart Institute, oh, Nielsen yeah. Norman Group, Adobe XD. Like, I mean, I, I get these kind of um, things and I do find that, you know, I, if I don't read them, I don't read them. And it's like six weeks of them are saved up. That's... That's like, it's like 18 n- newsletters that I need to go through. And then I find like I'm powering through them and just tweeting the most interesting stories. So yeah. I look like I read it, but I didn't actually read it or Dude, something. Dude, 100%. That's exactly what I do. No, like I like uh, like I picked up something from Seneca who was uh, like the, like an advisor to, I think, um, to Nero, like it didn't, it didn't turn out well for him, but he's one of like the uh, most famous like Stoic philosophers. Um, uh, and he was like, so, so I read just like a little poll quote that he did that comes up um, on, on something I look at. And it was basically like, hey, whenever you're about to give your attention to something, you give your attention to like a TV program, obviously Seneca didn't say this, I'm paraphrasing. Um, you look at a newsletter, you look at an email, um, you, or specifically like news or information, you should ask yourself, like, like, is this going to make me better? Um, and, and, and just answer it. And if yeah, go for it. If not, like, let it go. So, so I subscribe to all these emails, the, uh, like the react weekly is a good one, uh, because it's, in part like my business to stay up to date on things to stay up to date on like user experience research best best practices uh I, i'm a developer so like all all the cool code shit that goes around so i subscribe to react weekly because you know react is incredibly popular and only getting more popular um and it's a good thing to know i don't work in react i work in like Vue, <laughs> and like i realize that um like for me, like like I've started like looking at content like that. Like, is this is really does this really have, have any, any practical desire application? To work to in React, or is that why you're reading it? Because you want to work in React, or no? I'm, I'm trying to cover my bases, right? Like, my goal is to be informed. Like, I want to be the most, I want to be as informed a developer as I can. Um, but then, like, if I ask myself, it's like, is this really making me that informed in a useful way? Like, am I better for reading this? Like, do I ever like use any of this? And like, like you know, kind of like spark joy on this. Uh, on this content, and just admit I haven't that, watched no Spark Joy. And Read the this. book. Well, no. So this goes into our whole. This relates so much, but I have this exact same problem we're talking about with Netflix and uh, yeah. Everyone's just like you know, Netflix kind of hides their analytics. Which is, you know, they're a private company. They can do that. But then they put out things like the most binge walk shows. <laughs> and so, like, and there are shows that I don't know where people get the time. And I don't think people have an exorbitant amount of time. I think people are just into different things. But someone will tell you, like, oh, my God, you have to watch Umbrella Academy. I power yeah. through it. It's amazing. And someone else will tell you, like, Punisher Season 3. It's so oh, amazing. Right. And it's just, oh, it's only 10 episodes. It's only... And I find myself, like, I will never, ever... I don't have the time to watch this stuff. And then Spark Joy is like a show that's on Netflix. And it's yeah. like, hey, I have it bookmarked because it's like my bookmarks and my add to my list is longer. I will never watch all this stuff that's on Netflix. Exactly. And the thing is, is to that point, like everyone said, I'm a big X-Men fan. You know, I, I, I've been an X-Men since I was a kid and, and the X-Men and the Doom Patrol and Umbrella oh, yeah. Academy, there's a thing there. It's like, well, which one came first and which one steals from the other one? And so, like, an article came out when Umbrella Academy came out that said, like, Doom Patrol was first. Umbrella Academy was technically second and X-Men was third. But everyone loves X-Men and they don't even know about the other two. <laughs> but then the Umbrella Academy came out and, you know, it has, like... Uh, great reviews on Netflix and I start watching it and it's kind of this thing. It's like, where you're saying like, before I started, am I going to enjoy this or not? I get one or two episodes in and I'm like, how many episodes are left? (laughs) And I literally started fast forward watching it on Netflix where you fast forward and it's just like going super quick and you're like, oh, I kind of get the idea. And I fast forward watched 
the entire Umbrella Academy after like episode three because I knew I didn't have the time and I just wanted to know what happened. And, so cons- and that's horrible. I know that's horrible yeah. because it's like I respect the creative genius that went into it and the time uh-huh. and the acting, but it's it's like that whole bullshit of just like there's so much to do. I have uh-huh. limited time. I can't do it. You know. I so I like like stoicism, right? It's a uh, like popular among the software bros. Um, popular by Tim Ferriss and stuff, including Marcus that. Aurelius. Is software bros a term? <laughs> That's not. Um, okay. Someone, <laughs> someone <laughs> called. So I, I think I think I told you like someone called me, maybe not called me directly, but in reference to a thing I run, uh, m- mentioned that it was being run by a programmer, and I'm like, am I, am I a programmer? Like I I can't name. I can name like three football players. I'm not, a, but like this this idea, I'm I'm not gonna lie. It like it wore on me, and I'm like, am I a bro? If I become a bro, and then um, and I'm like, is is it because I wear a baseball hat? <laughs> like um, so anyway, so software bro. So I've I've just accepted it. Like I started, like uh, I introduced myself like joking jocularly in uh in our work Slack. I changed my name to from Schofield to bro field because why not <laughs> you know um, embrace it. just embrace it it's just a thing where i'm like like i think newsletters are a great way to like a, a great example but if you did this with everything before you give your attention to something deliberately you're like yo like is this really like how i want to spend my time da, 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 da. um and if you can be really like it's, it's basically that whole like fuck yeah mentality if you're not fuck yeah about like umbrella academy like don't do it attention grabbers are out there and ux is really good like the, the practice of what it is we do is really good at getting your attention and then keeping you there right so what but, is the criteria because it seems like some of this stuff conflicts with one another right so meaning that at some point you want to just relax and chill and enjoy something um versus yeah like, like everything i do being balanced against like, is this going to improve me or hone my skills? You know, right? Not, so, so, so maybe, so maybe like spark joy is like the right term, right? It's like, or, or like the fuck yeah thing is is the right term. So Seneca was talking to a bunch of um, other super intellectuals who are incredibly privileged, own slaves, um, in the like the richest empire the world has ever known at the time, right? Um, but so he's like, of course, like you should spend all day every day improving your mind. Um, because you can sup with the gods. I think that's, that's some shit that he said. Teach yourself to like not do it. Like don't settle for the things that are um, that are there, and, and just and, and just use that kind of like mentality for for every aspect of your person. Like what you what you choose to consume. Like I've it's felt sacrilegious, but I've been unsub- unsubscribed from so many emails, except now that my emails that do arrive are all things that really interest me at that time, right? So like I, I treat that with like conversation and 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 stuff like that too, and the and the entire goal is honestly because like I work in a startup and it's like everyone's like super stressed and everyone's super stressed about money and budgets and making a good product and looking good and improving their career, the MVP and and all that stuff. All of my friends work at startups or in this kind of like super agile environment where it's kind of like the same thing. So everybody is really hyper stressed out all the fucking time and the news is bad and and etc. So like it, it becomes to a point where like I just decided to cut all of it out and I'm in a much better headspace because of it. Yeah. Um, staying current. I had, I used to have like a, a checkbox. So I do a, like a bullet journal and I used to have like a little checkbox. Like my to-do list every day was what I call like stay current, like read all the newsletters, read all the stuff. And I'm like, and I, like, I, I finally just, uh, stopped. I was like, I was like, to what end am I staying current? I think it's interesting to be like my to-do list. I, I keep Google keep lists and yeah. I share them with, um, for grocery lists or, you know, I just, here's to do like these, it's not more so daily, but things that are like, here, what I have to do in the upcoming week or things like that. Yeah. And, checked, and it feels good kind of checking them off, you know, it feels super good to check them to do. Yeah. Them. But I, and I think it's interesting. What you're talking about is something that maybe is something we can talk about in an, uh, an, another conversation. But what's interesting is like, how do we, like, how important is it to stay, current so to speak right it's a great and I think, topic yeah. yeah and i i funny enough i actually had this conversation literally today with someone at work about uh web design 
you know? Yeah. So it's just basically like, okay, so once you know CSS SAS preprocessor and okay, so then you know like CSS transitions and, you know, and uh, do we need to keep learning CSS or stay right. current? Like, do I need to, who's ever really used a grid? Does anyone even use the 960 grid or like yeah. Bourbon SAS grid or the CSS grid? Do I need to take time to learn that? Yeah. No, I don't think I do. I think it's like I'll never use it because with media queries and Flexbox, I'm kind of good to go. Yeah. Like who will ever need to learn CSS grid? You know, and so I, I, we had this whole conversation about like at what point does a web designer realize like I'm full, I'm done. I don't need to yeah, learn anything yeah. more. <laughs> at what point does a developer of like, um, I don't know, Vue.js, React, or Angular, just like, I, I'm, I'm good. I can kind of, I know I can build whatever I need to. You know, yeah. I don't really need to learn anything new about this. I mean, I guess the same thing with UX and testing. Like, you know, if I can tell you how to get the data that to answer your questions, do I need to learn more UX skills? You know, right. I, mean, right. I think there's some things where it gets to like empathy maps and and user maps and and service maps and service blueprints and it's just like oh my god i mean essentially what we're trying to do is visualize a process yeah. right or a flow do we need to have like yet another does, yeah does this flow on the weird. whiteboard work when i like <laughs> exactly. um, no you, you're right i used to put a lot of thought into staying current and maybe it's a sign of age maybe just maybe it's a sign of like wisdom or whatever yeah i have decided that i don't quite care if I'm current. Do I need to get all of the newsletters <laughs> that are teaching me like all the new things or to get subscribed to this or go to the meetups because it's like at some point, and I will say this and I'm not, I will never knock any con or person by name, but I've actually been to conventions before to where it's like, you are literally trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip here because there is no more to cover like in yeah. this industry, you know, this yeah. industry is done. It is what it is. It's defined. Maybe if there was some new breakthrough of something or attachment and tandem to it, another industry yes but at some point it's just like there's nothing here you know i feel strongly about that with web design at what point does the World Wide web consortium it's like and we're done we're good <laughs> we have nothing more the internet about. is finished <laughs> it's finished it's taken this long but we're good to go <laughs> we're all good now we can go home <laughs> uh, and on that note we are all going to go home <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a start of a, another 10 episodes this is a metric episode 71 you can uh, star heart favorite us and your pod catcher of choice like us on metricpodcast.com share us with your friends that's the best way to do it um, leave us five star reviews on either google play or itunes otherwise just be sure to tune in consistently we super appreciate it next week we're talking about uh do we whether you <laughs> yeah whether we need to stay current and if so like how how do strategies for staying just current enough that you don't get fired right <laughs> i love so, it i love it <laughs> subsequently like we both get fired <laughs> it's like oh i hear you guys are sh shirking on the job <laughs> <laughs>